Leverage is a common term used by coaches at all levels to describe a dominant performance or a good player. You know it when you see it, but the key ingredients to playing with leverage routinely is largely undefined. The BLAST acronym connects the dots, defining applied leverage by identifying each of the components present when one player consistently dominates players of equal size, strength, and athletic ability in one-on-one -on -one matchups. Use this tool in conjunction with the SPAT acronym to teach, assess, and correct technique on the field or in the classroom to expedite skill development in the interest of improving safety and performance with your players. Blast Overview. Play with a good base. Play long with the hands. Ascend or uncoil the hips. Stay square when engaging. Triangulate or attack opponents off their center line. As you watch this video, notice each clip features all of these components, not just the one being highlighted. This is an important detail because playing with leverage is the synergistic result when all five ingredients are present at once. Base. Posture is the key to execution and safety when it comes to all forms of contact, and our base is literally the foundation for success. Here are the key points. Form a triangle. Your feet should be wider than shoulder width, with the hips inside the knees and knees inside the ankles. Point your toes out with both feet fully in the ground and the weight evenly distributed on the insides or insteps of the feet from heel to toe. We call this staying grounded. When uncoiling for contact, the base will change slightly as the knees bow outward. Moving up the kinetic chain, be sure there is an arch in the lower back and the spine runs vertical from front or rear view with the head and eyes up. Play long. When engaging with the hands, longer is better. Playing long takes the helmet out of contact and allows separation, enabling players to maintain vision of the field while at the same time controlling the man in front of them. Playing long requires perfect posture with the hands in front of the body and the elbows pointed to the ground. Anatomically, the arms and hands are the weakest link of the kinetic chain when you consider the closing speed and forces that occur on the field. So perfect placement, posture, and timing of hand strikes is key. Ascend the hips. All contact should be initiated and delivered through the uncoiling of the hips, regardless of the type of fit or position-specific objective being employed. Remember, the hips drive the hands, not the other way around. Most coaches and players understand this, yet very few players are fully utilizing this great source of power. We call the position of the body when the hips reach full extension arc strength. This is the position that yields our greatest power in body control. The suplex in wrestling is a good example of arc strength. The only way to lift a person of equal or greater size over your head is to arc the hips. One of the most common misconceptions still circulating in football is the notion that the low man wins. This is not true. Low pad level isn't the key to leverage. It's the height and trajectory of the hips as they ascend. The hips are the fulcrum, or the support on which a lever moves when it is used to lift something. Ascension of the hips allows players to deflect or lift opposing forces coming from a horizontal plane. This provides players with sustainable power and better performance while at the same time extracting the head from contact, which is the basis of the safe football program. Stay square. Operating with a good base and descending the hips are critically important to playing with leverage, but these principles mean nothing if we are not square with our target at the time of impact. Staying square is one of the key ingredients to playing with leverage from coil to finish for two reasons. One, it allows for multi-directional power and body control. Opponents will move on us, and by staying square with parallel feet, we can adjust to lateral movement without compromising our base. Two, it enables us to achieve the arc strength position. If our hips are not in line with our target for contact, we lose the ability to fit up in the arc strength position. Engaging with feet staggered takes the power of our hips out of the equation and destroys our base. The bottom line is, we are strongest when square, from coil to finish, and this is true for all position players and forms of contact. Triangulate. This term is most commonly used in the fighting arts, and it means to engage or attack an opponent at an angle, off their center line or the middle of their body. Engaging in contact with an opponent at their center line is never a good idea, because this is where they are strongest and carry the most force on impact, which means it is also the most dangerous, commonly resulting in helmet-to-helmet -helmet collisions. Triangulating opponents is also referred to as attacking half a man, and its application is universal for blocking, shedding, or tackling. To triangulate, simply offset your body to a particular side based on scheme or position-specific objectives with a square base at the point of impact. This approach is not only safer, but it softens opponents, requiring less force to assert control over them, as opposed to attacking their center mass. This is the final ingredient of applied leverage, and it's consistently used by the best players at each respective level.